Hey, today is November 4th, 2021, and today was the day that I woke up not really knowing how to feel. I mean, I knew it wasn't going to be a good feeling, but not really knowing what I wanted to say or how I wanted to address it. Today marks the six-year anniversary of the disappearance of my best friend, Deanne Hastings, who disappeared in the Spokane area. And to date, there has been no resolution, no real answers. And I've had to think about this for night after night for, for six years. And more recently, we've had a number of high-profile cases that I've seen across the news, the media, uh, one of them being the Maya Millet case here in San Diego uh, near Chula Vista. And there was, or at least there is some progress to that in that there was an arrest made about nine months after it had happened. I believe it happened around January and there was just an arrest of the husband. And then of course we had the Gabby Petito case, which was resolved almost immediately. And uh, I'm so thankful that there is some progress being made on cases like that. It's sad that there are cases of other people that don't get any attention and that there are people that are forgotten. And, and six years later, there are friends, family, people that love someone still waiting for answers. And in the case of Deanne, she had three children and she had family and she had a lot of people that loved her. Now, Deanne was somebody that struggled with a number of things and had her troubles. And for that reason, I think that she was largely forgotten. I also think that the media did her somewhat of a disservice and that they tried to do what the media does and tell a, a glamorous, picturesque story that would be interesting to viewers. And it wasn't entirely accurate. They painted a, a picture of someone that was really happy and had turned her life around. And in many ways, yes, she had been doing well for a while and she had turned a lot of things around. But she still had her struggles and all of us that have struggles know that is that they're not something that leave you you can take steps and make progress but they're always something that is inside of you in some capacity and so she definitely still had her demons and i was someone that was in her life for a period of time and i knew the good and the bad of her and loved her all the way through it and i saw all facets of her all the things she could be and, and loved her unconditionally and so i was someone that in times of duress, she would come to me, she'd come stay with me, or I'd go visit her. There were a number of times that I flew across country on a whim to go see her because she needed my help. And there were times that she would just show up at my doorstep and say, hey, I need you. And I know from what I know that even though the media tried to portray it as she was in this happy relationship and she was about to get married, I know that she was trying to escape a situation, that she was trying to get away that she was fearful and afraid. And Deanne was not somebody that was often fearful and afraid, even though she found herself in a number of bad positions. Being fearful and afraid is not something she often was. And so for her to have those types of feelings and that type of reaction, it definitely raises a red flag in my eyes. Now, around the time that she officially disappeared, I sent her an email and I was just checking up on her and I got a response. But the response that I got from her email address was not from her. And over the course of the past six years, I have tried to collect as much information as possible. I try not to interfere with anything, but I tried to collect the information that I could in the interest of being helpful and bringing resolution. Uh, my goal has been to avoid causing further pain to those in her life that miss her, but to give her the due diligence and the respect that she deserves in her disappearance. I believe that she deserves to have her story told that the truth should come out and that her family, her friends, those that love her deserve to know. And so over the course of the past six years, I've collected quietly information. I've collected sources, people that have reached out to me because of the stories that I've shared. And there's a lot of mounting information and sources and every single one of them has pointed in the very same direction. And so I collected that information and presented that to the detective on the case. And 
not to criticize anybody for, for not doing their job. I, I don't know what's happening behind the scenes and I'm not privy to that information and they have no obligation to tell me anything. But to my knowledge, nothing has been done with the information that's been presented. I've been told that it's insufficient. But if I was to tell the information that I have available publicly, and, and I feel like I may be getting to a point that I have to, but I'm trying to avoid doing so in the interest of not divulging information that could be vital to a resolution to this case. Um, but I think if people knew what I know and what I've heard, it's not just alarming. It's almost sickening that nothing has been done and that it's just been left alone. And so I have to wonder what's going on. Is it being covered up? Do people just really not care? Does the Spokane Police Department really just care that little about a, a missing person? Is it because of the fact that she struggled, had issues with addiction and mental health, that she's just deemed less worthy of attention and, and that it just doesn't matter? Uh, but it definitely matters to me and it matters to those that loved her. And so I think that she deserves better than what she's gotten. And uh, I can't help but feel like she's been let down by a lot of people. I, I know that I'm continuing to try to share her story, but I still feel like I'm not doing enough. And even I, in sharing her story, I get a lot of criticism. People say, oh, you need to just let it go and you need to move on. Uh, why do you share her story so much? Why do you do so much art that's dedicated to her? Well, say it was you and you disappeared. I think that you would hope that somebody would be willing to continue telling your story until it was brought to light what happened. If it was your child, I think that you would want that for your child. If it was your parent, I think you would want that for your parent. If it was for a loved one, you would want that for your loved one. I think it's something, a situation that is very difficult to grasp until you are in that situation. And it's a situation that I wouldn't wish for my worst enemy. And it's so disheartening to just not have these answers, to have that lack of knowledge. And I've shared my stories over the years. So I do have a number of blog posts and stories at KariniArts.com that people can check out. Uh, but I am going to continue to write stories and share my experiences and do what I can to keep her story alive until there's a resolution. Because I feel like I owe that to her and I feel like I have let her down and not being able to do more. And I feel like a lot of other people have let her down as well. And I, I think that she just deserves more than what she's got. And even though she was troubled, even though she was, honestly, she was a pain in the butt a lot of times, but you know what? I loved her no less for it. I knew all that she was and I accepted her for that. And I know that uh, even the people that have reached out to me, uh, they've said, Oh, you know, I, I came across your story, but I didn't know if I wanted to reach out to you because Based on what I could read, your level of attachment to her and the things that you said seem a little weird, seem a little crazy. But you know what? Uh, I would rather be that and be loyal to this person that I loved than to not seem crazy or, or to, to care less. It's just who I am. And I think that that's one of the reasons that Deanna and I connected in the way that we did. And I apologize for the uh, terrible lighting right now. It's just that time of day that it's a little awkward. Um, let's see if I could fix that a little bit. There we go. We'll just shift angles. But uh, I think that I think that there's a resolution that needs to be found here. And I, I think that there are, and I'm going to tell you straight out, that there are a lot of things that are not known to the public. And the stories that you may read that are available are from sources that didn't really know her. And that weren't close to her because I have had no less than half a dozen people reach out to me and every one of them has said, this is what I think happened. This is who I think is responsible. And it's all pointed in a singular direction and for so many different people to come to the same conclusion and continue to pile on evidence for that and to have nothing done about that. The fact that they never checked her phone, they never checked her car, they never examined the note that she supposedly left. And there's a lot more information that is, it's downright sickening if you were to hear it. And again, I, I want to share that information, but at the same time, I'm caught in this weird position where I don't want to reveal the cards that I have in the interest of not wanting it to sabotage the potential to bring a resolution to this. But how much longer do we have to wait? It's been six years. And to think that she disappeared at, at 35. And she'd be 41 now. And, and to think of all the years that 
that she's lost all the years she could have had ahead of her. And with the fact that all the progress she was making to think that she really was on a trajectory to improve her life and to better herself. And I knew her for a long time and I saw the back and forth, but she was doing well for a good period of time. And I think she really was trying. And this was the one time that I wasn't super aggressive and saying, Hey, you need to come here now, or Hey, I'm going to come there because I knew she was doing well. And so I wanted to trust her judgment because I felt like she was doing better. And just to think that the one time that I didn't push it is the time that she didn't come back. Uh, Deanne was known to, to disappear sometimes for a week at a time, weeks at a time. And I think that the person responsible in this case was privy to that information. I mean, I know they were privy to that information. I think that that was used as a tool to be able to cover up what I suspect was her murder. I don't believe that she's still here. I do 100% believe that she was murdered. I 100% believe that the people that were arrested didn't have anything to do with her murder or her disappearance. And... Uh, I think without knowing her from the inside, it's hard to kind of grasp the situation because it is such a weird situation when you read the story. It's just a little bizarre, but it was kind of the way that Deanne lived. But I'm able to, I feel from the inside, piece together certain things based on my knowledge of her and the patterns and history that I saw from her. Uh, But she was overall a beautiful, wonderful soul that was doing the best she could fighting a lot of obstacles, but I was very proud of her. I was very proud of the progress she made. And I'm very sad that I didn't get to see where she could have taken that. And all I can think to do at this stage is to continue sharing her story, doing live feeds and videos and things like that, maybe that nobody ever sees. But if nobody ever sees it, nothing is ever done, well, then I feel like I just have to continue doing what I can until my dying breath to to try to bring resolution to this because I feel like I'll never be able to be at rest or to have peace until there's resolution for her. And so perhaps that's the thing that gives me purpose and keeps me tethered to this world at times that I've wanted to give up because in losing her, there have been times that I just thought, you know what? I don't think she's here anymore. And quite honestly, sometimes I'd rather go be with her wherever she is, uh, even if it's uh, beyond this world. But I feel like her kids and her family and those that loved her deserve answers. And and I don't see a lot of other people doing something about it. And so, yeah, I don't feel like I'm doing enough, quite honestly. I really don't. But uh, I'm trying to do something and I'm trying to figure out what I could do that would be more to be able to help with this. But I feel like a man on an island sometimes. and, And I just feel like I'm not getting any closer. It almost feels like I'm getting further away, even though I'm getting more information, just seems to get harder and harder with each passing day because there's this time distance and then that's interjected into that. And I just remember how after she disappeared, it was probably uh, some time had passed and I was going through my floor canvas, the canvas that I have on the floor when I work and I flipped it over and I found her handprints on it and I forgot that I had had them. And so I ended up cutting them out and and framing them. And I had them in a very secure spot in my room. And I remember one day I heard this really loud crash. And when I came into the room, these very light handprints that were secured very strongly onto the wall. I mean, I have have big, heavy paintings that never budge. But this tiny, light, little painting of her handprints had somehow fallen or flown across the room, essentially. How they got to where they were, I have no idea, and put a big gaping hole in my door that's still there today. And I was thinking, wow, she's really trying to tell me something from beyond. And it was, I had to laugh a little bit because I was thinking, I'm like, this is typical Deanne fashion to really make an entrance and to make an impact because she would always let you know that she was there. And she used to joke and say that she was like a stray cat and she'd just show up when she wanted to and mark her territory. And that's what she did. It was uh, not always healthy. It was often chaotic, but she was Deanne and I loved her for all that she was and, and she deserves more than what she's gotten. So my goal at this stage, and I feel like the only thing that's really going to help is if I was to get this to be national news again, but how do you get somebody's disappearance from six years ago that people paid attention to for a minute, but then glossed over because it wasn't the hot new news how do I get that back into national 
level news coverage, but I feel like that's the only thing that's going to bring the attention or the pressure to get anything done. So I don't know if someone is out there and you have connections to a resource that can get me there or to get her story told, please put them in contact with me. Uh, or if you're a private investigator or somebody of that nature that's willing to help me out, reach out to me and I will share what I have to try to get this going. But I, I don't really know what else to do. Uh, all the information points, again, in the same direction. A number of the sources have expressed their fear of coming forward and pointing fingers because of knowing or believing, but really in their heart knowing who is responsible and what they did to her. And so they are fearful for their own families and not wanting to get involved. But there's definitely a lot more of the story than has been told, as is often the case, but there's a lot more here. And it almost feels like one of those things that eventually is going to be a movie, like a, a major blockbuster movie. And in a weird, sick kind of way, I think that Deanne would like that because Deanne loved the spotlight. And so I, <laughs> Deanne in Deanne fashion, still managing to do things her own way from wherever she may be. But six years later, on the anniversary of her disappearance, there's no less love for her than there was the day that she was here. And so uh, I'm a bit exhausted because it, it is emotionally draining. It's always uh, a memory popping up of her or, hey, this would have been her birthday or, hey, this is her kid's birthday or, or things of that nature. So she's always something on the mind. There have been plenty of dreams, uh, plenty of nightmares, some very recent one, even where I, I found her. But I, I can't always remember my dreams. But I remember even though I found her that it, it wasn't a happy dream, but I can't piece together the missing parts of the dream. So she's always on the mind and just something that in someone that I'll never be able to let go of. And so some will say, oh, well, that's not good for you. That's not healthy. You need to let go. But again, wouldn't you want something, somebody to be fighting for you? Wouldn't you want somebody to be fighting for your parent or for your child or for someone that you loved? Would you want someone to just let go of them? So again, there's no winning in this situation, but hopefully there is perhaps at least a bringing to light of what happened. I think that's the best that can come of this. And I don't know when or if it will, but I'll continue to do what I can. So check out KariniArts.com for my blog where you can see more posts about Deanne. You can also find a lot of the pieces that she inspired and information about those and some of the stories behind that. But always feel free to share my stories with people and to pass it along to people that may be able to help. Thank you and have a good day.